Grab your Explorer's Outfit, Wargamers, because today we're taking our first steps on the journey into solo wargaming campaigns. This book is a slender volume, only yay thick. Let's take a look how many pages we got here. Uh, 120 pages. It's about 15 bucks. You can get it on Amazon. Link in the description. I discovered this book via the Solo Wargaming show, appropriately enough. Again, link in the description. And he did a quick review of this, uh, which, uh, if I can find a copy of that video, I'll make sure to put a, a one of those magic windows here somewhere on the screen. So you can click on it and go watch that and get a better feel for what all is in this tome. Rather than do a proper review on William Sylvester's The Solo Wargaming Guide, I thought it might be just as informative and a lot more fun, though a lot more time-consuming, to walk you through the process that old Bill here provides for setting up a solo wargaming campaign. This is pretty close to uh, a Tony Bath-style campaign management system. However, it's specifically geared towards solo wargaming, which is perfect for a guy like me who does these videos after he's put the wife and kids to bed. Uh, I'm going to walk you through it, and I'm going to add a few wrinkles to kind of help you, you understand how you can use this system and how you can randomize everything and still make it as interesting as possible, hence all of the dice. So the first thing we have to decide upon is essentially the setting and the campaign level. Now, those of you that have been following the channel know that I'm working on a big multiplayer uh, Donald Featherstone-style continental campaign using a two millimeter figures in a kind of, well, it's definitely the Black Powder era, somewhere between the Wars of Marlborough and Napoleon. We're going to do the same thing with this solo campaign. So there's your tech level. It's going to be Black Powder, horse, foot, and guns, wagons for moving stuff around. As far as the scale is concerned, we're looking at things on largely a regimental scale. And... Obviously enough, he says, Bill says, the first thing you need is a map. you got to have a territory to fight over before you can fight your battles. And so what we're going to do today is generate two countries, adjacent countries. This will be an imaginations thing. And the first one we're going to put together is called Sinistria. But before we begin, there's a couple of things we need to be aware of for this system. And that is that you need to think about how everything gets mobilized. And that means you need to know where your cities are and how much, how many troops each city can mobilize. So we're going to start off by making two, the maps of two countries. They're immediately next to each other. And we're going to call this first one Sinistria because it's going to be Sinistria, uh, on the left-hand side of the map. We'll call it uh, Bellamunda is the country that is the world that these two countries take place on. And this one is going to be Dextromania. Those of you that know your cheap Latin will recognize this as, hey, look, this is the country on the left. Dextromania is the country on the right. Very simple. So one of the things I like to do, and I've done this when handling map making and role playing games, it's called a die drop map. And I should probably, I should probably have a border around this. It makes it a little easier. If you make your map fit into a space, you don't have to worry about the dice going all over. Because what we're going to do is pick up the dice, drop them from a height, and wherever they land, that's where you're going to find a feature. In this case, we're going to have a river, and the number on the die will tell us how impressive that river is. We're going to have two forests. Again, the number will tell us relative size of the forests, and then we're going to have ten cities. The red die is going to be the capital city, and the red die is essentially just there for marking a location. The capital city will be the largest city in Sinistria. So, very simple. You just pick them up. And we drop them like so, and since these guys kind of fell off the map, we're going to drop them like so. 
Now, all we need to do is write down the numbers and the locations. All right, so what we have here is all of our cities ranked from 1 to 6, 6 being the largest. We've got some light woods over here, some heavy woods over here, and I've connected them in a way that makes sense to me, where you've got solid lines that connect all of the major cities. Solid lines are going to be improved roads. You can move quickly between the larger cities. The smaller cities are connected by unimproved roads. We have two other questions we have to answer. Why this blank space here and why this blank space here? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw a coastline up through here. And that makes city number five a port town. Again, as I said, here's our capital. Now, we still need to figure out what's going on over here in our right-hand city. But what about this blank space here? I think it's pretty obvious that this is a mountain range cutting up into the country of Sinistria. We're going to call this a Leftopolis as the capital. Unfortunately, the capital is very close to Dextramania very, uh, that's going to leave them pretty vulnerable. So we're already seeing some strategic difficulties open up here. The good news is they've got a couple of redoubts. They've got a string of rather large cities. And, oh, by the way, there's a river that is going to find its source here in the mountains. And it's going to flow. Now, it's not a very strong river, but it's going to flow down... And since this is our port city, we'll just direct it down there. We could just as easily have made our river flow this way. and uh, But because we're dealing with a blank slate, we can do whatever makes sense. And hey, rivers flow from there to there. So we've got a couple of easy crossings right here and another crossing down over here at number five. We may want to sprinkle in a couple of more smaller towns. But before we do that, let's go take a look at the rival nation. Dextromania, and Dextromania is going to follow the exact same process for developing the country. We roll these dice up, and any dice that don't appear are going to get re-rolled on top, and so we'll pluck those like so. Okay, I'm going to enter those numbers and be right back. Following the same sort of rules... We find that Dextromania has one, two, three, four cities that are very large. Five if you include the capital, which is tucked way up here. They also have a city right here on the edge of the forest, which has a density of two, and a raging river that cuts through, takes a sharp turn to the north, and heads into the bay. Now I put this shoreline here to link up with the northern shoreline of Sinistria. And aside from all of these major cities being connected by improved roads, I think we'll actually make this a, a crossroads. We're going to make that an improved road as well. So much more industrial, much more improved roads here. Dextromania definitely is the larger of the two countries. They're going to be able to muster a larger force. Putting them side by side, what we find is that it looks like we have a road connection here. And we'll go ahead and make a road connection between this little hamlet and there. And what that does is it opens up a second line of attack for, or, a, you know, a second connection. Oh, let me move that up so we can see. Because this woods is a five, that explains why we don't have any connections through this area. I'm actually going to make these woods considerably larger. And they represent kind of the frontier, probably rocky, not very resource rich, unlike this. And I'm imagining that Dextromania, this city up here, uh, is a logging town that logs lumber and sends it down to this port city right here. And now we have a functional campaign map. Uh, once again, we've got a large bare space over here, so we'll just go ahead and say, yeah, that's because there's a mountain range that cuts them off. And we now have a campaign map with some possibilities. We've got a northern route of invasion, a southern route, and if you want to get cheeky, you can send a unit through the forest here. 
the next step is going to be transferring this map onto either hex map or maybe a, a graph paper map. Uh, but before we do that, one thing we can do is take a look at what the implications of all of these large cities are. The Solo Wargaming Guide actually classes these cities as A through E, A, B, C, D, E, which is 1 through 6. Now, obviously, your capital is going to be an A-class city. Uh, excuse me, E-class. Wait a minute, did I get this right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the chart here. The A class are the largest, E class are the smallest. That's only A, B, C, D, E. Counting is fundamental. So ones and twos are going to be E class cities. And we're going to change those uh, to E class cities. It's easier for the ones. E, E, E. And then it's going to be A. That's a B. That's an A. And the reason for this is that these letter designations will help us understand you see a b let's see eight, six, five, four, three, and then this is going to be our d class so each of these will provide a certain number of regiments and in fact it's uh we got to go back to the dice for that a class cities provide two to five regiments so there's going to be two regiments out of the capital there's going to be one plus one the A-class cities provide two regiments. Oh boy, these guys are going to be in big trouble. And then the B-class regiments provide one to five. So we're going to divide this by two. So there's going to be two regiments coming out of this port city. We've got another B-class down here. And that's going to provide three regiments. The C-class, going to the chart provide four companies, so that's four companies, oh, I got that wrong, uh, D class provides three companies, so we've got three companies, four companies down here, and then two companies for each of the E's, two companies, two companies, Two companies and two companies. And that is where they're going to start the campaign. So mobilization is going to play a role in this. Going back over to Dextromania, we have the same situation. So just as before, for every A class, we're going to get two regiments up here out of this port city. We're going to get five regiments out of this crossroads city. We're going to get five regiments out of this city, we're going to get two out of this city, and then we have the capital who's going to provide four more regiments. So you can see already our industrial nation is sitting pretty. We don't have any B-class cities here, so that's it for the regiments. Then we need to look at companies, and it's going to go, uh, we get, there's a C-class here, so that's going to be four companies. A C-class over here is going to have four companies. A, two companies out of this E-class, three companies out of this one, and three companies out of this one. So already you can see we've got a grand total of four, six, eleven, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen regiments starting over here. Uh, compared to 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's 18 regiments. And how many companies do we have here out of the right-hand path? We've got 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 companies. And over here we've got a grand total of, what did I say, 9 regiments? 2, 4, 6, 8, 2... Four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven regiments, and we've got three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen companies. So they are badly outnumbered. We also have militia available. This number here represents the standing army that the capital can call up at the start of hostilities. In addition to that, uh, now each of the companies represents. Uh, 150 men. Each regiment has five companies, so 
you know, a regiment is going to be 750 men, and, uh, you know, we could calculate the total men available, which we will do shortly. But before we do that, I want to mention that the way we're going to run this is that the militias start and they remain in their, as the defensive force in their community. Once that community has been invaded, that will free up the militias to be able to travel with the regular standing army. But we need to know how many of those guys are available. So any A class is going to have 400 men or four companies. Now I'm just going to write down the number 400 so I remember which is which. The E classes will have nothing. Uh, the B class up here, he's going to contribute 300. This A class has, oh, I'm sorry, 400 down here. The C class has 200. B class, there's another 400. And the D class will have 100, 200 here. And there's an E, and I think that's everybody. Nope, I missed one. There's 100 there, and there's 100 there. So tallying those up, those up we find that we've got a total militia strength for the left-hand country of... 800, 900, 10, 11, 15, 16, 17, 1800. So we've got a potential militia of 1800 men. And bear in mind, that's not, that's men of fighting age who can be spared for the war effort. Over here, it's going to be a little more difficult because you've got uh, 200 here, you've got 400 here. Uh, 400 here, C is 200, 400, 400, uh, D is 100, 400, D is 100, and I think that's, nope, there's uh, another, what is that, uh, C class gives us another 200, Oop, C class gives us 200, so tallying those up, 6,000, uh, 1,400, 18, 19, 23, 2,700. So we have a potential militia force of 2,700. So, as expected, basically the right-hand country has a 3 to 2 advantage militarily, which means they're the attacker. If you outnumber the other guy, if you don't outnumber the other guy, it's a long shot that you're going to be attacking them. So they're trying to bring overwhelming force to bear on Sinistria. After stopping the video for a little bit and doing some research, I discovered that a general rule of thumb is about five regiments of infantry to one regiment of cavalry and then an equal number of batteries of artillery. So... Let's look at Dextramania first, shall we? With a 5 to 1 ratio, it becomes very easy. We're going to wind up with a total of 15 regiments of foot. We are going to wind up with 3 regiments of cavalry. And don't worry about whether those are heavy or light yet. We'll get to that. Then we have these 16 companies left over that we need to deal with. And... Likewise, with a 5 to 1 ratio, we're going to wind up with another 10 companies of foot. And we're going to have two, co um, two companies of cavalry. And that leaves, well that's 12, Get gives us 4 artillery batteries. Okay? So 4 cannons. And to make this easy, now remember, we're making it up as we go along. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Uh, where to put these guys? That's going to be the question, okay? We've got regiments all over the place. And we have to deal with... Uh, so what we're going to do is try to have an even mix as much as possible, okay? So if this port city winds up with one foot and one cavalry, then... This one with five will give, we're just going to make it up as we go along. We're going to give you, now we've only got three cavalry to play with. And we want to divide them as evenly as possible. We're going to put four foot here, and we're going to put one cavalry here. we got to have a cavalry down here in our capital. So with four regiments, that'll be 
three foot and one cavalry. So we're done with cavalry and we've used one, five, six, seven, eight foot. We still have seven left to go. And really that's all we have left. So with these five regiments, they're gonna be all foot. And then we've got two more regiments down here. Those are gonna be foot. All right, see how easy that was? So now we know where our cavalry are starting the game. One, two, three. Which leaves us with the question of where are these artillery going to come from? And what we're going to do is we're going to pull off 100 men, and we're going to have one artillery there. We're going to do the same thing down here. So we're reducing the size of our militia to add in the arty. Uh, one, two, and we're just going to go ahead and put another arty down here. We're going to put it in some of the big ones. Uh, that gives us a 300 militia there, and we're actually going to go ahead and do the other artillery, since we have a fourth, right there. Okay? And by doing that, we've reduced our militia footprint down to 2,300, but we've added uh, the four artillery. So there you go. There's your starting order of battle. The militia, the rest of these militia are going to be foot. So they've got an extra 2,300 men that they can call on. However, those men are defending the walls of the various cities. Turning the page over here to Sinistria, we have the same issue. Now, we're going to give these guys a little bit more cavalry. In this case, because we have 11 regiments we're going to play with, we're going to start off with a total of 9 regiments of foot and 2 regiments of cavalry. And just as before, since this is our capital, we're going to have to put the 1 regiment of foot here and 1 regiment of cavalry here. We're going to put that second unit of cavalry here at the crossroads. So we've got one regiment of foot and one regiment of cavalry here. And likewise, just as we did over on the other page, we're going to have an artillery here, and we're going to have an artillery here. One, two, three. So we've got both of our cav, we've got two artillery that were done, and the rest of these regiments, this is all going to be foot. We're heavy on the foot, and unfortunately, some of these guys are spread way the heck out in the middle of nowhere. Am I missing somebody? I thought we had 11. I've got two foot here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What am I missing? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, it looks like I counted somebody twice. We actually are going to wind up with only nine regiments over here. So that means we've only got seven regiments of foot. We're a little heavy on the cavalry. And that's really going to make defending the country of Sinistria difficult. We've only got one, two artillery batteries that we can field. Everybody else is on foot. Okay. And there you have it. You've got a war game campaign in the making. You've got your initial orders of battle. We can move on to the next step, but we're going to pause it here. We need to clean up the map a little bit. We need to assign some commanders and figure out what happens in the early stages of the war. But that is a subject for the next video. Until then, remember, Wargamers, I'm praying for you.